Welcome to the Unreal Directive. In this video, I'll be sharing with you how you can unlock the untapped potential of the content browser for Unreal Engine. This is a fundamental skill that every Unreal Engine developer, regardless of their skill level, should be mastering just because of how useful it is. If you want more fine-tuned information about this subject, you can check out my written article linked below the like button. And if you have any questions, feel free to hit me up in the comments section or over on the Unreal Directive Discord. Everything's linked down below. All right, let's dive in. So what I'm gonna be focusing very heavily on in this video is going to be the search field right here in the content browser. The reason for that is because depending on how you author your search argument, you can almost find every single asset that you want almost immediately without needing to type in just the name and scroll and hunting for it. Um, let's say for example, I'm in the Valley of the Ancients project for Unreal Engine 5. By the way, what I'm showcasing here works in the Unreal Engine 4 and 5, don't worry. Um, so again, uh, Valley of the Ancients, they, there's a main character called Echo. Um, so I want to find immediately just the Echo skeletal mesh. There's a few ways we can go about doing that. One, if you add a plus as a prefix to what you're searching, it will basically state to the search engine for uh, the content browser, just show exactly this, not everything that includes this. And likewise, if you do a, a negative as a prefix, it's basically stating to the content browser, show me exactly not this. Um, so that's one of the ways. Another way is, by default, the search field searches the, the name of the asset, as well as the type or class or even a collection. So you can actually do echo skeletal mesh, and it's going to basically search both echo and the name and type, as well as skeletal mesh and name and type. The reason why I mentioned name and type is if I make a, I'm just making a random uh, thing here, skeletal mesh. So if I type in skeletal mesh, oh, I should have added echo to it. Um, so actually, let's get Echo here, and you have Skeletal Mesh. You can see right here, it's showcasing both Skeletal Mesh assets as well as this material asset that has Skeletal Mesh in its name. So the reason why I'm bringing this up is because this is considered a incomplete search argument. A complete search argument consists of a key, an operator, and a value. Let me show you what I mean. So name... Um, again, what the search field by default searches for is name, type, and class. Um, so the key would be a name. The operator would be equals or any type of symbol. Um, if it was numeric, for example, you do like greater than, less than, equals. But when it comes to string, you want it to be equals. Um, so name equals echo. So now it's going to search for every asset that is that has echo in it and again you can do like the plus prefix or the minus prefix to do the same exact um search argument as before and to chain these together you do name equals echo and um, type equals skeletal mesh so this right here is basically the full search argument or search chain argument as this was. So the primary reason why that is important, I'm going to go to texture 2D just because, actually, no, I'm not going to texture 2D. I already have an example there. So uh, if I do type equals skeletal mesh, if I can type it correctly, um, type equals skeletal mesh, I'm using a full search argument. But if I get rid of this and I just use the incomplete search arguments, you can see that it's going to show everything. That's why a full search argument is very good for fine tuning. And another reason for a full search argument is because that's how you are going to be searching or a very, that's how you're going to be fine tuning your search to a amazing degree. Let's say, for example, static meshes. They have a, triangles. They have vertices. They have different types of metadata. You can actually search for that specific metadata using a full search argument. So let's say, for example, triangles. That's metadata for static meshes and skeletal meshes. 
um, greater than 10,000. So basically this is stating to the content browser, only show me every single asset that has triangles as the metadata um, that has more than 10,000. Um, but again, static mesh and skeletal mesh, I just want static meshes here because let's say I want to find all static meshes that have over 10,000 triangles that have no generated level of detail and they basically need to be optimized. They need to be quickly optimized. So what you can do is triangles um, greater than 10,000, do an and for chaining, type equals static mesh. So now it's gonna show uh, all the static meshes. It's gonna leave out all the skeletal meshes or anything else. Um, but I wanna make sure that it's not grabbing any other assets, asset types if there are any. So you wanna make sure it's a plus. And then I'm gonna chain this one more. Um, so LODs is gonna be a numeric value, but I want it to be exactly one. And the reason why LODs needs to be one is because a mesh will always have at least one level of detail, which is the base level of detail. There's never gonna be zero, there's never gonna be negative one. So that's pretty important to understand. So now you have all these assets right here that you can just go ahead and select one, control A, right click and bulk edit by property matrix. And you can then automatically generate level of detail for that. And it's very quick. And then if you're an ongoing project or if you're using this specific uh, search often, and you want to type it out every time, like you saw how long it took me to type out, I'll take a bit, even though I was explaining, I took a bit. Um, you can actually hit the save button right here and save it as a local collection or private or even a shared collection. A shared collection is very useful if you have a team. But if you're working uh, solo, local collection is probably all you need. So it opens up a collection menu and then you just type in a name, static meshes that need optimization. Long name, but descriptive. So now it's down here as a collection. So let me go up back up here to the content browser, clear out that search argument that I just did. So you can see that I don't have anything in the field here. I don't have anything selected. I can go down here to collection and voila, it's right here. Um, and so you can have any number of collections. Let's say for example, that you want say, um, list out every single 4K texture because you want to clamp it down to like 2K. Here's a plan. Um, you can do, oh, not textures, uh, dimensions equals 4096. So dimensions is basically, let me open up the asset real quick, is this right here on the dimensions, um, not displayed, but actually imported dimensions. Um, and it basically shows every single texture 2D that is, that is a 4K image. And you can go ahead and hit this and local collection and 4K textures. And oh, um, this right here is very important when it comes to uh, collections. So let's say, um, let me remove this right here. So let's say I've been doing all of these examples in the root directory of the content, um, uh, in the content browser. But if you go down, let's go over here. If you go down a few, um, and then you start typing in, it's only gonna show what's in that current directory or any children directories. So it's very important that if you're doing a global search for a collection, you wanna save it, that you save it in the content. But if you want to, if you know it's always gonna be under something, for example, it's always gonna be under like ancient content and blueprints and you wanna save this, you can, you can do so. That's very important to understand there. So another thing, this one, this one's really quick. Another thing is let's say that uh, you're you have all these assets displayed. Um, just ignore the search parameter. I just want to show a whole bunch of assets. So let's say you have a whole bunch of assets here. Um, you can actually very quickly, like you can just start typing in a name. As you can see in like the, the bottom right here, like just notice that I'm typing in echo. Um, it disappears after two seconds. Um, that text actually shows there. You can actually type in a, uh, 
whatever there. Like if you exactly know what asset you want, for example, I want to open up Echo here. I just type in Echo, hit enter. It's gonna then go ahead and open that asset. Um, same thing if I do like Echo Skeleton. So I can do like uh, Echo underscore. Oop, that was I ended up hiding that one sec. Um, so you can do echo underscore skeleton, hit enter, and it's right there. And that is a wrap. If this video has helped you in any way, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. It really makes a difference. And if you want more information about what was covered in this video, check out the video's description as I posted the article that I mentioned at the start of this video, as well as a search syntax cheat sheet, which should prove hugely beneficial. And lastly, make sure you head on over to unrolldirective.com as that is where I post detailed articles about Unreal Engine. All right, thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time. Peace.